Hello, and welcome to the dungeon. I'm your host, Rob. Today we're going to be talking about the Oath of Conquest Paladin. And one thing I really love about the Oath of Conquest Paladin is that you can actually play like a battlefield controller type of Paladin. And that's just a role that most Paladins are not very well suited for and just don't do very well at all. But you actually are quite excellent at it. And yet you can still be tanking with a high armor class and a shield if you want. You could be like great weapon mastering guys to the ground if you want. You can be a smite machine if you want. You can still do everything else that regular paladins are doing. But you've got this whole like crowd control type of aspect to your character that most other paladins can't do. And yeah, I mean, maybe they have hold person and a wrathful smite spell and a few things like that. But they don't do it to anywhere near the same degree that you do. And you're, honestly, you're, you're quite excellent at it. So I think that that gives you a real opportunity for a unique play style among the Paladin classes. And I just think that's kind of interesting. I also think that they have some cool roleplay potential. I mean, all Paladins do. I find that Paladins are one of the easiest and best classes to roleplay a lot of times. And yeah, maybe edgy Paladins are kind of the whole in thing right now in 5th edition between Conquest and Vengeance. I feel like it's probably a lot of edgy Paladins running around out there. But... I do think they're pretty cool. And if you look at the tenants, you've got things like Douse the Flames of Hope, Rule with an Iron Fist, and uh, Strength Above All. And they definitely have this kind of like live by the sword, die by the sword type of attitude, you know? And just, it's all about crushing your enemies before you. Conan the Barbarian style, hearing the lamentations of their women. You know, it's good stuff. Uh, so if we take a look at the actual subclass features, we'll start with the spell list. I think the Oath of Conquest spell, Paladin spell list is pretty strong. I think it's actually one of the stronger ones. There are a few spells that I think are kind of duds, but there's a lot of real standouts on the spell list, starting even as early as level 1. Well, level 1 spells, level 3 Paladin. So at Paladin level 3, you're going to get Armor of Agathus and Command. Now, Command's okay, but creative players can get a lot of use out of the spell, but in general, it's a first level spell that acts like a first level spell. There's, there's just better options as you get to bet higher level and you probably won't cast command beyond that. Armor of Agathus, on the other hand, is an amazing spell. It lasts an hour, does not use concentration, scales very well with higher level spell slots, and you know gives you temporary hit points. And as long as those temporary hit points are still remaining, anytime you get hit, you're just by a melee attack, you're reflecting that damage back. And it's pretty good, and it scales really well. And, you know, especially if you're a paladin and you're on the front lines a lot, it helps make you tankier and does more damage. Good stuff. Fifth level, you get Hold Person and Spiritual Weapon. Hold Person is one of these spells where I don't like it much as a second level spell slot, especially on a half caster where you may not prioritize Charisma and your spell save DC could kind of suck. Now, personally, I actually like pumping my charisma on Oath of Conquest Paladins, and I generally prioritize it more than strength. But I understand if people don't want to do it that way too. But I really want to land a lot of my crowd control effects on this character, so I'm probably going to put a lot into charisma. Or multi-class, one level of Hexblade Warlock, and then put everything in charisma. But whatever. This isn't a multi-class video, darn it. just can't help myself. Uh, but, like I said, um, as a second level spell slot, because it's humanoid only, because it's hit or miss, and because my spell save DC may not be great, I think it's okay, but I don't think it's great. But where it really starts to shine is when you can upcast it with higher level spell slots. Because now if I can hit two, three, four different guys, as long as one of them fails a saving throw, we're just going to be able to burn that guy into the ground. Me and all my allies have advantage to hit. All of our hits are automatic crits. I mean, it, it's just glorious. So the effect is so powerful that I don't want to say that it, you know, don't overlook the spell is what I'm saying. And, you know, when you're level five, it is hit or miss, right? Like you might waste your highest level spell slot and your action and do nothing. But it can also be a game changer. So, you know, keep it in mind. Uh, we also get spiritual weapon. Now, this is an excellent spell, in my opinion. 
especially if I don't have a good use for my bonus action. So if I want, like say, pull on mastery or something, I'm probably not going to get as much use out of spiritual weapon. But unlike, say, an Oath of Vengeance Paladin or some of these others, most of my abilities use an action, not a, a bonus action. So I could, like, say, drop my uh, commanding presence and then cast a spiritual weapon because commanding presence is my channel divinity, it's not a spell, and I could do both in the same round, and this will let me use my spiritual weapon still. And in a longer fight, spiritual weapon is going to deal a lot more damage than that second level spell slot would have as a smite. But that being said, if it's the fight only lasts one or two rounds, smiting was probably going to be the better choice. So keep that in mind. Spiritual weapons are going to really shine in the longer fights. But again, no concentration. Great spell. Level 9. Bestow Curse and Fear. Uh, bestow Curse is a little underwhelming in my opinion, and it is my concentration. I probably have better things to be concentrating on than Bestow Curse. Like, for example, a Fear spell. Fear is the money maker with this character. Combined with your level 7 aura, this is like the absolute dream combo. You can fear things, and then if they're caught in your aura, they can't move. Their movement is reduced to zero. They can't run away, they can't come closer, and your aura also does some damage to them, which is a nice little side benefit. That's not really why we're taking the fear, but you know, mostly we're just locking things down, and then we're just killing them. And uh, fear is Fear is excellent on this character. We're going to have a whole section on causing fear. <laughs> so, you know, if I'm going to be concentrating on anything, it's probably going to be fear. Level 13, Dominate Beast and Stone Skin. Uh, Dominate Beast is fairly powerful, but it is very selective. Obviously, it has to be a beast. By the time we're 13th level, a lot of beasts probably aren't really that challenging anymore. Obviously, if you're like a druid or something and you're 7th level when you get the spell, that's going to be a lot more useful. But that said, you know, there are some powerful beasts still. Things like T-Rexes are still around, you know. Other dinosaurs are pretty good. So, I'm not saying there's no use to the spell. It, it It's still a decent choice. Um, you also have Stone Skin. And usually, I'm not a big fan of Stone Skin. Uh, it only gives you resistance to non-magical physical damage, so non-magical piercing, bludgeoning, and slashing damage. It does last an hour, it does use your concentration, but I do think it's worth mentioning that even by 13th level, it's surprising how many things you might fight that don't do magical damage. And combined with an Armor of Agatha's spell, which also lasts an hour and doesn't use concentration. You can just pair those two really nicely. And now you're taking half damage from attacks, but the damage you reflect with Armor of Agathis depends on the spell level you used, not on any, on how much damage you're taking. So let's say you used a fourth level spell slot for Armor of Agathis, you're taking half damage, but you're reflecting 20 damage back every time you got hit. And now those temporary hit points from Armor are going to last twice as long, and you're going to be able to get a lot more mileage out of it. So I don't think that Stone Skin is a great spell, but I do think that combined with things like Armor of Agathis, or Agathis, or however it's pronounced, and your level 15 ability, which again isn't great, but you can start to get a lot more mileage out of it. So I think there's some nice synergy here that it's at least worth mentioning. Uh, level 17, Cloud Kill and Dominate Person. Uh, Cloud Kill's okay. I mean, it's obviously a lot better on a wizard when you get it at ninth level, for example. But Paladins in general don't have a lot of good AoE damage. You really excel at burning down one powerful foe where you can just smite them, like just drop big, big crits and stuff. You know, you're really good at that kind of thing. But you tend to not be good at AoE damage. And so, any AoE damage is still going to be kind of welcome. And granted, I'm not getting this till 17th level, and Cloud Kill's not the best, but, you know, I'm not going to say no to it. Um, we also get Dominate Person. And Dominate Person is actually pretty good, uh, especially since you can use it in certain social situations, maybe, and, you know, clever players can really abuse spells like Dominate Person, let me tell you. Uh, a final note, though, on Cloud Kill, and this isn't Cloud Kill's fault, but at 5th level, spells, you also get Destructive Wave. And that could knock things prone. And, uh, you know, if they happen to be frightened of you, 
and he knocked him prone. Now their movement speed is reduced to zero, and they can't even stand up. And uh, that could be pretty awesome. It means you're going to have advantage in all your attacks against them. You're just going to beat them into dirt and all your al Well, actually, maybe not all your allies. It depends how your party's composition is. Because anybody within five feet has advantage. Anybody beyond five feet has disadvantage. So if your party is like you, and then an arcane archer, a bow-using ranger, and maybe a warlock firing off Elder's Blast every round, they might not appreciate you docking everything prone and giving them disadvantage. But on the other hand, uh, you're an the Conquest Paladin. It's all about you conquering, you know? So who cares what those guys think? Just do what you want. Uh, as far as your actual subclass abilities. No, so that's your spell list. I think it's pretty strong. Your channel divinities. Just like every other warlock, you have two different channel divinities unlocked at level three. Your first one is Conquering Presence. As an action, you force each creature of your choice that you can see within 30 feet of you to make a wisdom saving throw. On a failed save, a creature becomes frightened of you for one minute. The frightened creature can repeat the saving throw at the end of each of its turns, ending the effect on a success. This is excellent, especially combined with your aura. Um, 30 feet radius, unlimited targets as long as they're within that range and you can see them. No friendly fire, unless you want to have friendly fire, but you get to choose a target, so, you know. Granted, that could be kind of funny, you know, the rogue's really just kind of making you angry, so you're just like, yeah, yeah, I try to fear everything, and, and the rogue. Not the cleric, though, the cleric's cool. Just, just the rogue. Uh, you know, that could be kind of fun. Your other ability is Guided Strike. You can use your channel divinity to strike with supernatural accuracy. When you make an attack roll, you can use your channel divinity to gain a plus 10 bonus to the roll. You make this choice after you see the dice roll, but before the DM says whether the attack hits or misses. I like this one at lower levels, you know, before I have my seven aura. And if I went with like Great Whip Mastery, I might find a lot of use for this. And even beyond those levels, there are times when, you know, maybe you just really needed to land that big hit. Like maybe the, the, the big bad evil guy is like 90% dead, but he gets to go after you. And if you don't kill him, he's going to get to attack again, and that might be pretty nasty. So, you know, you kind of wanted to land that big hit. Not saying there aren't chances to use it, but in general, I think the first option is just way, way, way stronger, especially when you're seventh level or above and you have your Aura of Conquest. So, Aura of Conquest, level seven. This is really the ability that makes everything kind of come together. Starting level seven, you constantly emanate a menacing aura when you're not incapacitated. The aura extends 10 feet from you in every direction, but not through total cover. If a creature is frightened of you, its speed is reduced to zero while in the aura, and that creature takes psychic damage equal to half your paladin level if it starts its turn there. At 18th level, 18th level, that was supposed to be, uh, the range of this aura increases to 30 feet. Now, the reason this is so good and yet, the damage is actually okay as well. I'm not saying the damage is the main drawing point here. But, you know, just dingling extra damage is always good, right? So, you know, maybe you manage to cast a fear spell on, like, three different targets. And you're level 10, just for easy math. Now, they're all taking five damage on the start of each of their turns. They can't run away because they're caught in your aura. And the fear condition in general is pretty good. This is what's going to allow you to, like, lock down targets... Avoid taking a lot of damage because now they all have disadvantage to attack you and all your allies. It's going to allow you to deal damage through your aura. And uh, it's also going to allow you to protect your allies a little bit. You know, I might joke that you don't care about your allies. But f frightened creatures have disadvantage to attack anything as long as the source of their fear is within viewing range of them. That isn't just you. That's all your allies as well. And disadvantage on all those attacks is, is just a glorious ability. It's worth noting that depending on the fear ability, some fear abilities cause things to run away. Some do not. Some just prevent them from approaching you. And, uh, you know, fearing things and causing them to run can be annoying sometimes. But, you know, that's one good thing about your aura. Is if they're in the aura, they can't run away. So, you know, that's pretty handy. But just locking them down in general is really what we're trying to do here. And like I said, disadvantage to all their attacks. It's also a disadvantage on like ability checks, I think, and saving throws. I could be wrong with that. I should have I should have looked before I checked, oh, before I did the video. But anyways, disadvantage on the, all their attacks, for sure. 
And in general, I just think it's a really strong ability. Anyways, also the fact that it's an aura and it's always in play is very nice because you don't have to activate it, right? So if you had to cast a fear spell on your turn, or if you had to use your commanding presence on your turn, that's taking your action. But your aura is always there, so it doesn't matter that that took your action, right? You cast your spell or you used your channel divinity. Now that just works with your aura. Uh, level 15, Scornful Rebuke. Whenever a creature hits you with an attack, that creature takes psychic damage equal to your charisma modifier, minimum of one, if you're not incapacitated. I don't think this ability is great. Um, even if you have 20 charisma, that's like five damage every time you get hit. And it's not nothing, but I don't think it's phenomenal. However, there are some good things I want to mention about it. It's not using your reaction or any sort of other ability. It's just automatic. It's not, you know, last one hour or last one minute. It's just always on. And, you know, if you get hit four times in one round, that's 20 psychic damage you just dealt back. Now, granted, if you got hit four times in one round, you might have some big concerns to worry about. But, uh, you know, it's still free damage is free damage. I'm not, not saying it's terrible. I just don't think it's as strong as some of the other little 15 paladin abilities are. But, you know, it's not the worst thing ever. Like I said, free, it's free damage, essentially. At level 20, you get Invincible Conqueror. Uh, as an action, you can magically become an Avatar of Conquest, gaining the following benefits for one minute. You have resistance to all damage. Now, like Stone Skin, you have resistance to all damage. Magical, fire, cold, necrotic, radiant, whatever. All damage. When you take the attack action on your turn, you can make one additional attack as part of that action. And your melee weapon attacks score critical on a 19 or a 20. When you use this feature, you can't use it again until you finish a long rest. Now, I will point out that unlike, say, a haste spell, haste gives you an additional action with which you could make one attack. So you can cast haste and then use that extra action to make an attack in that same round. This you can't. You use your action to activate this form, but you get that extra attack when you take the attack action, which you can't do until next round. That said, it's still a really... Oh, I think I just kicked the camera. Uh, that said, it's still an excellent ability. I, I still like it quite a bit. Um, <clears throat> I'm not sure that I'm going to take my Paladin to level 20. I'm probably going to multi-class at some point instead, but, you know, that's just me. Just That's just me. And also, it is a level 20 ability. But, you know, I think all the 20th level Paladins in general are pretty good. So, you know, this one's up there with, them, with most of those. I want to talk a little bit about causing fear. Like I said before, the fear effect plus your aura is really, really strong on this character. So, I wanted to talk, we've already mentioned the fear spell, but there are other ways to cause fear as well. One of them is with your first level spell, Wrathful Smite. Does an extra one die six psychic damage, not bad. Causes the fear effect in that target. And unlike a lot of the other ones where they get a saving throw at the end of the turn, this one they have to overcome it with a wisdom ability check, which is going to require them to take their action to make the ability check. So I actually kind of like this better because yeah, a frightened guy's gonna have disadvantage to hit any of us anyway, so he's probably not gonna hit. But attack with disadvantage is still better for them than not getting to attack at all and having to use by turn to make an ability check. It also means that things like legendary saving throws wouldn't help to overcome. Although granted, it could have used its a uh, legendary saving throw in the first place to avoid being frightened. But you know, just saying. There are some potential upsides there as well. In general, I don't like a lot of the smite spells. I'd rather just use that spell slot to smite with in, in a lot of cases. But I think that because, you know, in this case, you're going to do that extra die six psychic damage. If it's caught in your aura, it's going to take extra psychic damage on the, on its turn as well. So I do feel like, you know, the damage wise, it's probably going to be pretty similar when, you, you know, it's only a first level spell slot, right? And I do think that the Frightened Condition is pretty pretty good on, on this character especially. So definitely worth looking at. And it's only a first level spell, so it's pretty good. Uh, I also like 
either the Fallen Asimar with their racial ability. Now, granted, that's a Volo's Guide to Monsters class, or uh, race, sorry. And some DMs may not allow you to use that because they are technically monster choices, right? So, you know, if you can, though, Fallen Asimar in general has some pretty great uh, stat locate, allocation, giving you charisma and strength bonuses. That's pretty much perfect. And when you unveil your wings, you get that fear effect. And you can also do a bit of extra damage to one of your strikes every round while you have your wings unfurled. So I think that's pretty good. Another option, though, is player's handbook choice, which is always good. And that is the Dragonborn. They have a feat choice, which is uh, technically in Xanathar's, I guess, but whatever, um, of the Draconic Fear. I think it's, yes, no, Dragon Fear. That's what it's called, Dragon Fear. And again, it's just another AoE fear to effect, which is your racial feat. Uh, it is a feat choice, unlike the Asmar where you just get it kind of for free. But still pretty strong and very, very good. And again, the Dragonborn have excellent stat allocation, right? Giving you strength and charisma, absolutely perfect for this kind of character. So I do think that those racial choices and their corresponding fear abilities are worth mentioning. And granted, you know, there's nothing wrong with just going half L for Variant Human or Drow L for, you know, Trident or whatever else you're looking at. You know, there's a lot of good choices for, for Charisma Casters. Tieflings, especially if you take some of the um, Mordenkainen's choices, you know, you can choose, like, instead of plus one inch, you can take Strength or Constitution, and you get some different uh, choices as well for spells. But whatever. In general, though, I, th I think that there's a lot of good potential there. You're, between your channel divinity, between the fear spell itself, between may maybe your fa racial abilities as well to cause fear, you have a lot of different ways to incur this ability. And then, like I said, the fear ability itself is actually pretty strong. So I think that there's a lot of nice synergy with the class in general, and you can improve that with feet and racial choices as well. So, speaking of feats, if I want to play a sword and board paladin, and especially if I wanted to maintain concentration on spells, I might want to look at Warcaster. Warcaster is always a pretty good choice in, for any of these like melee caster types, and uh, you know, is good here as well. I think Sentinel is a pretty strong choice as well. Just more lockdown, you know. I mean, now if Somebody attacks an ally within five feet, I can make an opportunity attack. If that hits, their movement's reduced to zero. And this gives me a lockdown that's not fear dependent, which can be nice because if they're immune to fear effects, a lot of those uh, abilities I have kind of go by the wayside. Now granted, that doesn't mean you're useless just because somebody might be immune to fear. Like a lot of undead are immune to fear, for example, right? But, you know, you still have your smites. You have spells like Bless that you can just cast instead and maintain concentration on that instead of on your fear, you know? There are a lot of other things that you can do, and, you know, things like your spiritual weapon are still gonna be effective against undead, right? Like, you've got lots of other things you can do. It's not like something having immunity to fear or having legendary resist just means that you're just completely screwed on this character, and, oh, well, you know, I should've played Oath of Vengeance. Why didn't I play Oath of Vengeance, you know? No, not saying that at all. You, it's just that you have this other side of your character you can also do. But you're still a paladin. You can still smite. You know, you're still fine. Just saying, you know. Um, where were they? Feet choices. That's right. Sentinel. Uh, obviously, lucky. Always a strong choice. Help you to make a saving throw you might have missed, especially on like a concentration save. But really, any type of save you might have missed. Always handy. Uh, like I said before, grip of mastery. Pretty solid choice. You have your plus 10 you can give yourself. I don't necessarily think that's the best choice, but you do a lot of damage on Paladins. And, you know, especially, you don't have to be just using it with your plus 10. You can be knocking things prone while they're frightened, and now you've got them locked in your aura, and now you just have advantage. And you use that to overcome the minus 5 hit penalty, take advantage of that plus 10 damage bonus, and, you know, I think that's really solid. I think Polar Mastery, great on all Paladins. Maybe not quite as useful on you because you have a spiritual weapon and that's just such a good versatile spell. But, you know, this means you don't have to keep using spell slots on it. 
So, you know, it actually gives you an extra opportunity to smite as well. So I do think that it's pretty good. Nothing wrong with that. Um, I think the Magic Initiate might be a strong choice as well. And the reason I say that is because depending on what other class you pick, you can grab something like a Booming Blade or a Green Flame Blade. Both pretty solid options in a lot of cases. Uh, spells like Absorb Elements, very, very handy, right? Shield, uh, you could go Warlock and take, say, Hex, for example. You can take like a Find Familiar spell. There's a lot of really good options, and I think the Magic Initiate could be really solid. I also think that just multi-classing and taking a level or two or whatever of Warlock, 14, or <laughs> whatever it is, uh, I think that's a very strong option as well. But I've already done a, a video where we talked about uh, Warlock, Paladin, Multiclassing. So I don't want to like beat that dead horse already. Just saying that, you know, you could take like one level of Hexblade Warlock and 19 levels of, of Paladin. And then you can just, you know, have enough strength to wear your armor with no movement penalty. Put everything into Charisma. And now you don't have to choose between having a good hit bonus or having a good spell save DC. You can just have it all. And since you're a paladin, you've also got your spell protection aura, giving all your allies like your charisma bonus to your saving throws. There's a lot to be gained there. So, you know, definitely consider it at least. Anyways, that's basically everything I have. Um, feel free to like, subscribe, ring the bell for notifications, and most importantly, leave me your comments in the comment section. Uh, maybe you have comments about this specific character about the other conquest maybe you played one or want to play one or you you know just have an interest in paladins in general maybe you're just kind of curious like you're like hey you know i kind of wanted to play you know like this other paladin but you've made me kind of think about this and you know that's fine too right either way i love reading people's comments so you know feel free to comment away and that's everything i have i'll see you next time bye